And then as that brief um, briefing begins. I want to first talk about Officer uh, Darian Jarrett, who we lost today, and uh, what we've been dealing with uh, throughout this country. And, uh, and with law enforcement, and it's a, it's a huge loss to us. And I want everybody to know um, I love each and one of our officers that go out there every day. Officer Darian Jarrett went out there today and was serving his state, his community, uh, the best way he knew how. And um, I love him for that. And everyone that's here loves him for that. And I want you guys to understand that as we get through this. But these officers lay their lives out on the line every day for each and every one of us. Um, and as a chief, it breaks my heart that I have to be standing in front of you this evening um, talking about this incident and what's going on. So I'm going to get through this. And um, we're all going to get through it as a, as a family, a state police family, a law enforcement family. Um, and uh, I know this community is uh, uh, struck hard by what's occurred today. Um, but there's a few things I wanted to say about Officer Darian Jarrett. Um, there's a lot more I could probably say about him, but we'll save that for a later time. And, uh, but thank you for being here. And we thank you for the outpouring of support to not only our department, um, but this community, his family, and what um, we've had to endure this, uh, this evening and uh, throughout today. So thank you. On February 4th, 2021, a New Mexico State Police Officer Darian Jarrett, stationed in, New Mexico, in Deming, New Mexico, was assisting Homeland Security investigations. The officer was initiated a traffic stop on a white Chevrolet pickup on Interstate 10 eastbound near mile marker 101 east of Deming, New Mexico. During the traffic stop, the driver identified as Omar Felix Cueva, 39 years of age, fired at least one shot at New Mexico State Police Officer Darian Jarrett. Officer Jarrett was struck and killed by gunfire. An HSI agent arrived on scene and notified New Mexico State Dispatch that an officer was down, that our officer was down. A broadcast was put out to the state and the local law enforcement agencies. A New Mexico State Police Officer located Cueva traveling east on Interstate 10 near mile marker 116. Cueva pulled over at the exit and fired at New Mexico State Police Officers. The officers returned fire. A pursuit was initiated as Cueva continued to evade officers traveling east on Interstate 10. During the pursuit, other New Mexico State Police Officers successfully utilized a, a tire deflation, successfully utilized tire deflation devices near the Pachaco exit, Interstate 10, near mile post 135 by Las Cruces, New Mexico. Cueva continued to flee east on Interstate 10. At that time, officers from the Las Cruces Police Department, the Doniana County Sheriff's Office, and a U.S. Border Patrol agent assisted New Mexico State Police officers with the pursuit. A Las Cruces Police Department officer utilized a pr pursuit intervention technique maneuver near mile post 140 as the pickup came to a stop. Cueva exited the vehicle armed with a firearm and shot multiple, multiple rounds towards officers and deputies. Officers from Las Cruces Police Department, the New Mexico State Police, Doniana Sheriff's Office, and U.S. Border Patrol returned fire towards Cueva, who was struck at least once. Officers rendered aid to Cueva until emergency medical personnel arrived on scene. Cueva sustained fatal injuries and was pronounced deceased on scene by Office of Medical Investigators. One Las Cruces Police Officer was struck by gunfire the officer was airlifted to a trauma hospital in Texas where he was treated and released for injuries believed to be non-life-threatening. This investigation is active and is being led by the New Mexico State Police Investigations Bureau. The identities of the deputies and officers and Border Patrol agent involved will not be released until all interviews are completed. The New Mexico State Police officers have been placed on standard leave. Please reach out to the Doniana Sheriff's Office Las Cruces Police Department and Border Patrol for administrative inquiries regarding their deputies and officers. Officer, Jarrett, Officer Darian Jarrett began his career as a transportation inspector with the Mexico Department of Public Safety. He was certified as a law enforcement officer in December of 2014 and worked with the, worked with the former Motor Transportation Division of the New Mexico Department of Public Safety. In July 2015, he was sworn as a New Mexico State Police Officer where he bravely served until today. Officer Jarrett leaves behind three small children, and he was expecting his fourth child this year. 
Out of respect for Officer Jarrett, please refrain from contacting his family as they mourn the loss of our fallen hero. When more information is available, the state police will send out an additional press release. Again, I want to thank the outpouring of support from everyone that we received, messages, text messages, calls throughout this day. It's been a tremendous support, not only to the officers of this district who worked with Darian Jarrett, but to our staff who's come in down here and will be out here throughout the week. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come out here and we want you to understand that we're here to honor Officer Darian Jarrett for his sacrifice and what he's done for this community and what he's done for this state. If you have any questions at this time, um, I'm free to answer them. How old was Officer Jarrett? Officer Jarrett was 28 years old. 28? Yes, ma'am. Was what happened today at all connected to the shooting in Deming yesterday, but it also involved Homeland Security investigations? We're still under investigation as far as how this all came out, but the, the incident today um, was supporting an investigation by Homeland Security. Yes, ma'am. Um, was the individual, was the suspect um, uh, in possession of methamphetamine during this incident? We are aware that uh, the suspect involved in this incident was on his way to Las Cruces uh, to engage in, a, in a, a drug interaction or a drug buy or drug sale. We are aware of that information. Do you have any more detail about where the suspect was coming from? Um, um, we do understand that he was coming from the Deming area, um, traveling to Las Cruces uh, to interact in that in that drug. But it's drug not interact. clear if he came straight from like the board, the checkpoint. Or... Don't know that at this time. That invest that's still part of the investigation, and we're still working through search warrants and, and trying to nail down the exact whereabouts of where he was coming from. So we don't know his place of, uh, of residency, the suspect. Um, we do know a place of residency. We're executing search warrants and doing those and doing those sort of things to ensure that we follow up on the investigation properly. But we are aware of where he lives and where he resides. Is it at Deming? Yes, it is here in the Deming area. Do you know anything about his criminal history? Um, he had uh, did have a violent criminal history. Uh, nothing that we can locate that here within the state of state of New Mexico, but it does have a violent criminal history uh, to include uh, drug trafficking and some other charges that arise to the felony level. I'm Cristal Corrales from Telemundo El Paso. I'm sorry for your loss. Do you speak Spanish? I do not speak Spanish, no ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, how was Officer Garrett struck by, Garrett struck by gunfire? Was he walking up to the window and was caught by surprise by the suspect? Was this like a routine traffic stop and the suspect was kind of caught by surprise? He was conducting a traffic stop. We are aware of that. As far as the investigation and what exactly occurred, um, we're still sifting through that and trying to figure out um, exactly what happened. But it was a traffic stop that he was on. Is um, Interstate 10 close to Las Cruces still closed? Um, at this time, I'm not too. I'm not exactly sure. I know we did have off, or we did have investigators out there, and um, I'm not too sure if that's been lifted at this time. But I can get you that information and let you know. Okay, thank you. Is it still closed? It's still closed. Do you know how long it'll be closed for? Um, I do not have that time, but I'd imagine. I mean, it's a pretty involved investigation, so it should be closed for some amount of time. Okay. Thank okay. You, sir. Uh, I think there's a there's a host of emotions that come along with it. We were all coming down um, from the northern part of the state. Uh, we were able to get here and, and see some of the officers. We have a, I don't know if you're aware of, we have a grief counseling or a post team that assists our officers through, through tough times like this. And um, they've been speaking with the, those officers, seeing what they need to support them. Uh, we've actually brought in other officers throughout the state to be covering the, the dimming area throughout this and uh, they'll be covering that area. But our officers are, as you can imagine, are pretty shaken up and are dealing with it pretty tough. They worked hand in hand with this, uh, with Officer Jarrett for, you know, several years. And um, um, I think as you guys are aware, law enforcement, uh, we have a pretty tight bond when it comes to that. And you never expect, even when you know what the, the risk of this job is, you never expect to have to deal with this. Not only, um, um, not only um, as we see, but you know, when you wake up and it's one of your shift partners, it's, it's tough. To, it's tough to deal with. So they're having a tough time. Would you be able to say what kind of gun or guns were recovered in possession of Cueva? I cannot at this time. I don't have that information. And how is 